I was on a quest to find uh, vineyards where the, the owners are artists versus marketeers. If I wanted marketeers, I would go to California. I'm looking for small boutique chateaus that have been in the family for generations. Today is day one of my trip to the wine areas of Bordeaux and the Languedoc in France. My nine hour flight to Paris was delayed two hours. Now because of the delay, I missed my connecting flight into Bordeaux. My eardrum burst six hours into my flight to Paris. My luggage arrives in Bordeaux two hours before I do. Air France loses my luggage. It's found four hours later. What a crazy start. Day two. My plan was to rest today. Instead, due to my ear problem, I found out how the medical clinics worked in Bordeaux. I went to a clinic on the outskirts of Bordeaux. From there, the doctor sent me to an open pharmacy in downtown Bordeaux. Even with my GPS, there were so many one-way streets, I ended up parking 10 blocks away from the pharmacy. That night, I got some much needed rest. Day three. From my hotel, I took the tram 15 blocks into Bordeaux's city central. My private tour of Bordeaux began at the Santa Sculpture. <laughs> my first stop was a wine shop, Les Intendants, uh, with over 5,000 wines from Bordeaux. Rue St. Catherine is the longest shopping street in all of Europe. We took time out for a break at the pastry shop Dons Blanc, uh, which you know basically consisted of coffee and uh, the, these little dainty pastries. The pastries were the number two pastries in all of Bordeaux. We completed my tour at the fully functioning, beautiful Basilica of St. Michael. Day four, here we're looking at two right bank wineries. Varenne is well established and historic and it is in Margot. Julian and Natalie Marais are the sixth generations to run the family's three boutique chateaus totaling 45 hectares. Now that's about 112 acres. Natalie walked me through the entire operation. Here we have the fermentation process, barrel aging, bottling, and then of course we tasted some fabulous wines. Chateau Chiron uh, is owned by the a uh, Mahale uh, family for over 160 years. Sh the Chateau's courtyard is here in welcoming people. Fermentation is done in both stainless steel and large concrete vats. Aging is done also in the traditional barrel French oak and big large baroques. The family is very interested in arts and artifacts that come from, from the, the property originally. And of course, we tasted some delicious wines. Day number five. I'm going to primarily look at, at two left bank chateaus, among other things. Uh, Chateau Mallard uh, Le Grevere uh, is just outside of Bordeaux. In 1997, Alfred and Michelle Bonny purchased it and completely renovated the chateau and the vineyard. The very old vines and gravel soil contributes to produce world-class wines. Now, as far as the fermentation process is concerned, uh, they're blending old and new processes, plus a state-of-the-art control room where every tank's temperature is monitored and controlled by computer. As far as aging is concerned, they're using traditional bar barrels, and they're also experimenting with the pearl process. Now, the red and white wines, the red particularly, were absolutely beautiful wines. Uh, grapefruit, excellent tannin backbone, and the white was a blend of Sauvignon Blanc and Simeon, which was surprisingly expressive. These were tremendous wines. Next up is Chateau Bellegrave. That's in Pauillac, France. Uh, Chateau Bellegrave is just off the beaten path. You turn off the main 
narrow two-lane road and drive down a short dirt road. You drive through a 15-foot high white picket gate. Now, I met with uh, Ludwig uh, Meffrey. Uh, he's the owner. He's third generation as far as ownership is concerned. It's funny because Ludwig asked me uh, why I had come to Bellygrave. And I told him, I'm not looking for larger, more highly marketed vineyards. I was on a quest to find uh, vineyards where the, the owners are artists versus marketeers. If I wanted marketeers, I would go to California. I'm looking for small boutique chateaus that have been in the family for generations. He sort of laughed and, and sheepishly said, I think you'll find what you're looking for. You've come to the right place. Bella Grave was a blend of state-of-the-art technology and, tradi and the traditional approach and historic techniques. The wine was exquisite. Once I got back to Bordeaux, I settled into my hotel, then strolled down the narrow streets to yet another open-air cafe where I had a charcuterie for dinner. Today is day number six, and today I'm going to be visiting two uh, chateaus. Uh, Chateau Arnave, uh, which is due east of Bordeaux. It's a saint Emilion Grand Cru. Now, Grand Cru is a designation established in Bordeaux in 1855. The wine is of superior quality. It is the highest and most well-respected wine classification in France and globally. I met with Florent Malay. Now, Chateau O Nave has been in his family since 1864. It's made up of 9.5 hectares or about 23 and a half acres. It produces approximately 50,000 bottles per year, which in the wine world is pretty small. As far as the wines are concerned, what he has is Merlot, Merlot Cab Franc blends, Merlot Cab Franc and Cabernet Sauvignon blends, plus some creative bottling. Next up was George 7. It's about 25 uh, minutes northeast of Bordeaux, and it's a, it's a right bank uh, uh, chateau also. I spent the afternoon with Sally Evans, who was the owner, and uh, uh, she produces a range of Merlot wines. What I mean by a range is it's, it's a variety of price ranges and qualities. Uh, she also produces white uh, Bordeaux, and her wines are growing on 35-year-old vines. Sally transformed a dilapidated tractor barn into a wine tourism venue. I made the 25-minute drive back to Bordeaux for dinner, had a very casual dinner, white fish on, on a bed of uh, sautéed fresh veggies uh, with a white Bordeaux, which is a Sauvignon Blanc Simeon blend. Oh, oh, did I forget to say? I had some bread. I had a lot of bread. I can't forget the bread. It is really good. Day number seven. I'm on my way to Chateau Roquefort, which is about 45 minutes uh, outside of Bordeaux. Now, it's currently owned and operated by Frederick and Anne uh, Ballinger, uh, the second generation of the Ballingers who have owned the chateau. The estate covers 240 hectares, just over 590 acres of forest, farm, fields, meadows, vineyards, and the chateau. Current archaeological digs show that the property has been inhabited for more than 5,000 years. The sand and rock gravel soil creates a unique and beautiful wine. The grapes are moved from the harvest trucks straight into the basement or cellar. This requires less handling, which maintains the integrity of the grape and the juice. Fermentation and aging is done in oak, stainless steel, and concrete vessels. We tasted a whole host of absolutely delicious wines, both red, white, and rosé in every style and price. Their 2021 white was cited by the Wall Street Journal as the number one Bordeaux. From Roquefort, I drove several hours via the motorway, or interstate as we call it, where I crashed in my Toulouse hotel without a bite to eat. Day number eight. Today I'm in Limoux, France. This is in the Languedoc region of southwest France. The Abbey of St. Hilaire is one of the primary reasons I made this trip. This abbey, uh, this is where the first sparkling wine was made. You can see here, stairways go down uh, into the underground caves, and all the wines were made in these caves. <laughs> Interestingly, grapes were dropped through holes in the ground. 
These holes, which are in the roof of the caves, were used to save time and energy. This is much like what we saw them doing over at Chateau Roquefort yesterday, only without the machinery. Now from Lameau, I drove about 20 minutes north to Carcassonne, France. Here I had a private two-hour tour. <laughs> this actually satisfied the history geek in me. I hiked up to the village and castle. Interestingly, the walls, material, and style reflect the different groups of people who occupied the region and the social status of those who were involved in its construction. It was on the Garonne River and was strategically placed for trade and defense. The river had one of the early lock systems which strengthened trade from Bordeaux on the Atlantic to the Mediterranean Sea. Here's the central cathedral. Notice the design. Roman arches and French Gothic architecture. Now back in the days, the walls were, were brightly painted and inlaid with gold. Light through the stained glass and off the gold filled the room. To the people, and by design, the colorful light represented Jesus, the light of the world. Now, peasants' life was really hard, and the, the church's size, majesty, color, brilliance of gold, and the light from the, the stained glass was uplifting and a cause for, for hope for them both now and it created an expectation of the life to come. From here, I went on to Montpelier. Now, here I checked into Hotel Richard de Belivar. I settled in, had a wonderful dinner, and got a good night's sleep for the coming day. Day 9, Sunday, the day of rest and exploring Montpelier. I sat down for a leisurely lunch just as a street flautist began playing Ave Maria. That was a wonderful spiritual touch to the morning. My drink was the closest I could get to an umbrella drink. Day number 10. After breakfast, I was off to visit two chateaus in the languedoc roussillon region of France. This region is virtually unknown in the States. It produces world-class wines at a fraction of the cost that you would find coming out of Bordeaux, the Rhone River, or Loire River Valleys. I visited Chateau La Roque and also Chateau Lancier. La Roque, it totaled 90 hectares or approximately 220 acres. 40 hectares or approximately 100 acres are under vine. Organic and biodynamics is the key to their, their vineyard. I found 60 to 100 year old vines. The vineyard is made up of rocky limestone soil. Fermentation was done in large concrete and stainless steel vessels and wooden baroques. Aging was also done in smaller concrete, steel, and wooden vessels. The whites and rosés and reds, which are primarily Syrah, were all surprisingly beautiful wines. Now, Chateau Lancier has been farmed since the 16th century. It's owned and operated by the Durand and the Valentine families. At 85 hectares or 210 acres under vine, Lancier is one of the largest estates in the Languedoc. The wines are reminiscent of what you would find in the Southern Rhone River Valley, Syrah, Grenache, Movide, and Carrigan grapes. After a long day throughout the Languedoc, I got home to Hotel Belleville and once again had a phenomenal dinner, filet mignon and a Syrah à papa. Day 11. Today was a home run. I had the unexpected pleasure of going to Chateau Flo Guerrier. The owner, the Count Pierre de Colbert, and his wife Mary were more than gracious. We began in their new, very successful restaurant and tasting room with a little something for lunch. As we got to know one another, Pierre decided to show me the chateau and his family residence. The Corbeirs have owned and operated the chateau for six generations. Pierre's son will be the seventh. It was raining too hard for us to walk the vineyards. We did get a drenched view of the vineyard and some of the expansion in progress. As we got out of the weather, we barrel tasted several wines. 
discussed his fermentation, aging process, the impact that the current historic heat and drought have on this particular vintage and his vision for the future. We got back to the tasting room and tasted some tremendous wines. After an exciting yet wet day, I got back to Belleville, had a hot shower and found a sidewalk cafe. Day 12. Today was a day to relax. Meander the streets of Montpelier, take in some of the sights, have a light, something to eat while writing postcards to my friends back home and indulging in the French national pastime, sitting in a sidewalk cafe for hours. <laughs> you know, it's funny. I can't figure out what these people do all day. I've never seen so many people sit at a cafe for such a long period of time. Day 13. Today is farewell to Montpelier, the Languedoc, Bordeaux, and Hotel Richard de Belleval. Belleval. I could not have asked for a better location, service, or place to lay my head. Now today my goal is to dip my toes into the Mediterranean Sea. As I drove to the Marseille airport, at the recommendation of Belleval's concierge, I plan to visit three small historic cities or villages. Axe, Arles, Miramas are on my, my docket to visit. You know, I'm embarrassed to say I never got to the Mediterranean. The day was gone. Day 14. I'm off to catch my flight. I don't know about you, but I had a wonderful time. So many wonderful people, sights to see, vineyards and chateaus. Incredible. Thanks for joining me. Until next time, cheers.